How much power do any of us really have over our own destiny? Not much, I'm afraid. Seems to me that our only real power is over our response to the accidents of our fate. The problem is not to try to control what is outside ourselves so much as what is inside of us, which poses the sticky problem of ethics. Who among us knows himself enough to predict his own actions under unexpected and unfamiliar pressure? A forced choice of life or death, for example, of killing or being killed. But why? Why me? There's no reason to kill me. Him, maybe, but not me. Sure, there's a reason. I can't leave you here alive to blow the whistle on me. But I won't. I won't say anything. Would you take that chance? If you or me? But, please. I don't want to die. Neither do I. Our mystery drama, The Woman Who Wanted to Live, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Bryce Walton and stars Larry Haynes and Roberta Maxwell. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It is a night of thunder and rain and darkness. A night of fateful coincidences. A night that invites violence and vengeance for its darkness hides Ray Barden robber and man-killer. A few hours ago, Barden broke out of the maximum security prison at Browndale. Armed, wounded, deadly. He stumbles out of a forest of wild cypress onto a lonely stretch of coast road. There is almost no traffic. The only light visible for miles comes from a small garage and filling station. The attendant inside the station a blonde young man bends over the cash register, checking the day's receipts. Seven, eight, nine, and that's another ten. For a grand total of fifty-three dollars and uh, sixty-one cents. Huh. I didn't hear anybody drive up. No, nobody did. Oh, uh, ran out of gas, huh? Yeah, you could say that. How far to walk? Far enough. Boy, what a night to be... Oh, boy. A live one. Right. And don't push, Sonny, or I'll blow you away. For $53.61? For nothing. Okay, okay. I'll play. Watch that cannon, Bandito. My daddy once told me never point a gun at a guy unless you intend to use it. Good advice. He ever tell you to shut up? Yeah, I so You better shut up. I just reached behind you to the sack of tires. Uh, this rack here? Yeah, that's the one. Now find the empty chain sack. That's it. I put the $53.61 in the sack. All right. I tossed the sack over here by the door. In the uh, good old days, you'd be robbing the rich and giving that to me. Yeah, maybe in an old movie. Okay. Now let's have the keys. What keys? To the Jeep out there. Oh, sure. They won't do you any good, though. Why not? Uh, the Jeep's had it. Rod's burned out. Yeah. Yeah, it's war surplus. Near burned out when I got it. Uh, mister, you won't get that Jeep out into the highway. Yeah, well, I'll find out. But first, you see that roll of friction tape on the shelf? Yeah, sure, I see it. All right, now take it and plaster up that big mouth of yours. Hey, <laughs> now there's no reason and to... And then I want you to lie belly down on the floor... With your hands behind your back. Oh, what do you know? A, a second customer. When it rains, it pours. Hold it, kid. Don't trip. <laughs> no, you get up head. <laughs> Too bad, Sonny. But better dead than dumb. All right, inside, lady. I said get in here. But just stay out of that handbag. Just... Want a cigarette, Mr. Barden? But it seems I left them in the car. Just stand right there. Or you'll blow me away, I know. You just gave me a demonstration. 
Is, uh, is he dead? What's it to you? I only thought if he needed help. All he needs is a funeral. He is dead, isn't he? All at once, gone. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they go. That's how you did it. Why? Why do you have to kill? He was dumb. He thought you driving up drew my eyes away and he could push me. And you're not smart either. Just bad timing. Sorry about that. It's your funeral. Did you come in alone? You see anyone in the car? No. But a friend could have run off somewhere down the road to call the cops. I'm alone now. No friends, huh? Not a one. What a waste. A looker like you. Yeah, a real looker. It's too bad. That's why I'm not supposed to be smart. All blonde lookers have to be dumb. I knew a smart blonde once a long time back. But she didn't have your style. Yeah. A real waste. But I gotta be on my way. So I'll take your car. You won't be needing it. But why? Why me? Why should you care when in a minute you'll be dead? But what reason? Him, maybe. But not me. I just want a cigarette, Mr. Barton. You're dumb. Same as him. Admitting you know me, know my name, that's dumb. And I can't leave you here to blow the whistle on me. But I won't. Would you believe that? If you was me? You've got to believe me. I can't take that chance. Please. I... I don't want to die. Neither do I. So, what's new? Well, some people don't seem to care much. But life started to be good to me. I... I care a lot. So do I. I'm out of the prison cage with a chance to stay out. That's the last break I'll ever get. I'm not leaving you here alive to bury me. No. I won't die. I won't. Oh, sure you will. We all will. Like you said, the timing's just a little off. I won't die now. Later, maybe. Any time later. But not now. Now just, uh, do us both a favor, huh? Don't fight it. That can be quick and easy, but if you fight it, it can get all messed up. I just step back there on the other side of the window. You're weird. You're going to kill me anyway, and you're giving me orders. You're going to turn out the lights, lock the door. You want me out of sight of anyone who might look in through the window. You figure that'll give you a good run before anyone uncovers anything here, right? Shut up. Or you'll kill me. I should do you a favor. Walk to my place of execution. Assume my proper position. Die by the numbers with a smile. You're the type that have a body digging its own grave. All right. So have it your way. I will. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, Mr. Barden. I'll fight. I'll resist. And when it's done, you'll have to drag me where you want me. That won't be easy, will it, Barden? With that bum arm losing what's left of your blood? You can hardly drag yourself around. I'll manage. Then what? Then what? Uh, oh. See? Oh. You don't have enough strength left to chew bacon. Here, let me... No. Here, just get back in. I gotta move out. I can help you, Ray Barden. Let me. You help me? Listen to me, Ray. It can be different with me. Because you're a woman? <laughs> I'm not just any woman. You need me. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. You need me. Alive, not dead. How's that? We need each other, Ray. We both want to live. Right? I'll help you stay alive. And that'll keep me alive. Are you stalling? Sure, I'm stalling. Wouldn't you? But I'm also telling you like it is, Ray. Like you wish it was. You have to take me with you. Yeah, you're crazy. You're crazy, thinking you can go it alone. You're badly wounded. You've lost a lot of blood. You're getting weaker. How far do you figure on going by yourself? That'll be my problem. With one arm, it'll be a problem, all right. My car's a stick shift. And even if you can drive, you'll pass out at the wheel anyway. You're almost out now. Out in your feet. Is that what you're waiting for? Stalling, huh? I'm stalling off getting shot dead. And I'll stall that off as long as I can. 
That's what I'm saying. I want to stay alive, that's all. And to stay alive, I'll go with you. I'll drive. Ray, if we're stopped, if there's any trouble. It's my car I'm driving. It's my driver's license. Won't that look better? Won't that give you an edge? Maybe. Why, maybe? Maybe you'd, you'd shoot your mouth off. Why in heaven's name would I take a chance like that? You're there beside me. You've got the gun. I'm going to shoot my mouth off. Ray, I'll be thinking of just one thing. Just one. That you can always kill me. Yeah. yeah I can always do that. I'll drive, Ray. You can rest. You've got to rest. Rest, yeah. I mean, rest, that wouldn't be so hard to take. Maybe we can even stop over somewhere after we get down the line a ways. And we can get a repair job on that arm. No, no, that's out. I'm not stopping anywhere until I... All right, if we have to stop. If there's car trouble or anything, I'll be a good cover for you, right? That would throw them off, wouldn't it? You and me, traveling companions. Who'd ever figure that? Yeah, I sure wouldn't. Give us both a chance, Ray. You'll have a lot better chance making it over the state line or wherever you're heading. And while I'm helping you, I'll be alive. And, and maybe you won't ever kill me. Why not? You get to where you're going and you're safe. Maybe by that time, you won't want to kill me. I don't want to kill you now. The only time I ever wanted to kill was in the war. When I wanted a medal. I wanted to be a hero. I only do it now when I have to. Maybe with me you won't have to. If I do have to, I hope you don't forget that I will. I won't forget. Didn't I tell you? That's all I'll be thinking about. All right, so let's move out. Thank you, Ray. Get in the car. You get in and I'll... Don't you ever do what you're told? I've got to fill up the tank. Remember, I drove in to get gas. So get the gas. And don't forget to check the tires and the oil and catch that windshield while you're at it. You go on, Ray. Get in the car. Take it easy. I'll turn out the lights and lock up. Here. I'll hang this clothes sign outside the door. That'll give us some more time. Yeah, you do that now, and then we'll both go out. What are you worried about? What could I... You can get a yen to run out the back door into the boondocks or maybe try a quick phone call or leave the phone off the hook. No way. I'm not taking any chances, Ray. Not a one. We made a deal. I'm alive. Yeah, I know. And you'll do anything to stay that way. That's right. Just anything at all. Here we have a most unlikely pair to be riding off together into the night. A pair that, it seems to me, could only have gotten together through the most extraordinary coincidence. They share one powerful bond of togetherness, the desire to live, to survive at any cost. They'll do anything to go on living. They'll even tolerate each other's company, which in Liza's case would seem to indicate a great love of life indeed. Perhaps we'll begin to see in Act Two just how far she's willing to go. One of history's most persistent lessons seems to be that you cannot take your existence for granted. Particularly if you fail to lock your doors and windows, take a walk at night, Count your money alone on a dark, deserted road, or accept rides from strangers. Even if you're an infamous murderer and the stranger who picks you up is a pretty young blonde, you just never can tell. Incidentally, in this age of liberation, women are still supposed by some to be emotional creatures who cannot withstand the rigors of emergencies. I never did believe it. My... my name is Liza. Uh, you knew my name before you saw me. Right. 
the radio. Conked out during the storm. Still fouled up. But it told all about how you and two other lifers shot your way out of Brownsdale and... Uh, we was already out on the work detail. Only this time, we had the guns. Right. And you gunned down a couple of dumb guards and escaped through the swamp. Your description, wounded arm, everything. I knew you on sight. Yeah. And you just had to tell me, huh? I didn't think. I just blurted your name out. Really took me by surprise, you know? Like bumping into a famous movie star. A movie star? A shock of recognition. That wasn't smart. But why should you have to kill me for recognizing you? What if you'd tied me up and left me alive there? And they found me and I told them, sure, Ray Barden was here and he went that away. So what? So I'd be dead. Why? I mean, wouldn't they assume you'd been there anyway? They know you just got across the swamp, and Brownsdale's just off there through the woods. No, 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 because they got me running the opposite direction. South into Florida. How come? I set it up. Planted decoys down south saying they saw me. If they ever get wind I'm heading this way, I'm a goner. Why? Because they'll know just where I'm heading if I'm landing north. There's only one place I can go to hide away safe, and they'll be there. But... That boy back in the station killed and robbed, won't, won't they suspect you anyway? I mean, it's just across the swamp. They know one of the other cons headed this way. Little Bo, they call him. Little and mean. They'll lay the filling station job on him if he hasn't already gone west. Gone west? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, what the boys call getting wasted, buried. Well, they won't take little Bo alive either. The warden doesn't want any of us brought in alive. Dead, he said. Dead or in hog meat. I don't know why they call it going west, though. Primitive people worshipped the sun. Thought it was a living god. When it set in the west, they thought it died. Maybe that's it. How'd you figure that? I didn't. Read it once. In a book. Ah. Uh. I've had plenty of time, but not for books. Not for talk, either. I don't like a lot of blab, but it's okay now. Talk. Talking helps keep me awake. So you just drive, and we talk, and that's it. But one wrong word, one wrong look to anybody else, I mean a cop, a station attendant, anybody, and you're finished. I hear you, Ray. I don't want to go west for a long time. Okay. Uh, let's see, U.S. 16 is about two miles ahead. And you make a right on 16. Why? Look, you just turn. And maybe a roadblock. Why, if they figure you're running south? Little Bo, remember? Or anyone else they can net. But they hardly mention this little Bo or any of the others. Just you. Okay, so little Bo's not a top star. Never copped an Oscar. He's well thought of in the trade, though. And they want him just as dead as they want me. Well, anyway, forget 16. There's no roadblock. That could be. But there isn't. I was driving south when I stopped back there for gas. I went through that intersection. There's no roadblock. They always block the same roads in this county when there's a Bronsdale break. So you just turn right and don't bug me. But I drove down US-90 all the way from Palm City. There's no action, Ray. No roadblocks. Nothing doing. You're fixing to run me into a trap, huh? You've got the gun. I'm staking my life on it, remember? No roadblock. Besides, you can make good time on 90. Turn off on 16 and we end up in a mud hole. It's supposed to be graveled. But after this downpour, half of it will be underwater. And I don't have any chains. All right. All right, you, st you stay on 90. But if you run me into that roadblock, I'm taking some pigs with me. And you're going to be number one. I hear you, Ray. Believe me, I hear you loud and clear. Where? Help me. It'll be here. It'll be here at three o'clock in the morning. Please. Please don't let him in. Wake up, Ray. Don't let him in. Easy. Easy with the gun. It's me, here. Liza. They'll be 
Here in the dark, we can't see him. Ray, don't shoot. Uh, I'm Liza, remember? Uh, Wake up. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, Liza. Yeah. Uh, I'm driving. Remember? Uh, shoot me and you'll wreck both of us. Liza. Oh, sure. Liza, I remember. Yeah, the woman who wants to live. That's me. So just put the gun away. Yeah, I was having a... That bad dream. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. I've been sleeping. Where are we? What are you up to? Nothing. Huh? It's all right, Ray. You just dozed off for a couple of minutes. How do I know? What are you trying to pull? We're on 90. See? Back there? Just past 16. And no roadblock. You see a roadblock? Well, it could have been. And I was sleeping like a dumb baby in its crib. Now, don't you do that again, Liza. Listen, you let me sleep again and you've had it. Okay, so you won't trust me. What's trust got to do with it? I know you're just waiting. Waiting for your chance. What chance? What do I do? Wait for you to go to sleep? Try to get that gun from under your coat? I'm going to chance you waking up and blowing my head off. And what if I get the gun? I'm terrified of guns. You think I'd know what to do with a gun? Yeah, I think you'd know what to do with a gun. Everybody in this neck of the woods knows guns. I don't. And if I had, I wouldn't take the chance. Long as I'm alive, I don't risk being made dead. So what about the lights up ahead, the roadblock you said wasn't there? It isn't here. That's a town. A town? Canesville. Just a bump in the road. Take a deep breath and we'll be through it. Now, don't you kid me. All these little birds down here are speed traps. Now, just slow down. I'm slowing down. Slower. 35? 25. 15. Now, some fat sheriff is going to want to write you out a ticket for speeding. A hundred bucks or a week in a slammer. You want to draw one out, don't you, so you can finger me? King feels okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Hey, what's that... Thing nosing out between the buildings with the circling red light on top, huh? Just pull up that coat collar and relax. Get your face down. He's right there waiting. If he follows us... He won't. See? Look back. Is he following us? No, not yet. He's got a radio, though. He'll be calling all cars after that hand signal. You really are dumb. What made you figure you could get away with that? I just waved to him. You waved to a cop. You just waved goodbye. Ray, I had to do it. I know him. It was all Sheriff Bender. You signaled something and told him something. Do you see him following us? No, you don't, do you? He isn't calling to anybody on any radio, either. I tell you, I've known old Tom Bender for years, and he knows me. I drive through Canesville every day going to work and back. I had to wave to him. Why? Because I always do. And if I hadn't done it this time, he would have been suspicious. Okay. You better be right. Why would I pull a dumb stunt like that if I want to stay alive? You're not thinking straight. You're beat, Ray. You're folding. How long has it been since you had me sleep for food? A couple of days, I guess. Seems like more like a month. You're so worried about staying awake. There's a bottle of pills in the glove compartment. This brown bottle? Yeah, only a few, but you're welcome to them. I don't need any. I've never been more wide awake in my life. There's no label on the bottle. The tablets came in a box. I put them in the bottle. How do I know they're not poison or sleeping pills? I'll take some. It's only about ten tablets here. If you're used to taking them, maybe you could eat all ten and still stay awake. <laughs> Your arm must hurt a lot. Oh, that pain keeps me awake. It's probably infected and poisoning your whole system. It could be. We ought to stop somewhere. Try to take care of it. I'll fix it up when I get to the oil patch. There's a motel coming up. Yeah, I see it. Just keep driving. But you said they had you running south. No one will see you. I could register for us. You could rest a few hours, get that arm fixed up, and... Forget it. But keep talking. You're doing fine. Not so fine. The way you keep nodding off. How about you doing a little talking? What can I talk about? About what it was like? You mean up the river? You can't tell anyone about it who hasn't lived in a cage for 15 years. If you... 
I've lived in a cage, you wouldn't ask. But it could be good in a cage. Good? Yeah, if you like security. That's the real reason most guys get themselves sent up. They can't face the real thing. They can't make it on the outside. Escape into a cage? Yeah. Most of the cons love their cage. Want to spend their lives there. If they're let out, they can't wait to get back in. There's a, a con I knew named Maurice. Paid the foreman and the captain to hold his job and his cell until he got back, back in. And when he, when he got out, they pull his job as soon as they can and get, and get caught. What about you? Ray? Huh? Why did you say something? I said, what about you? Well, what about me? What? You wouldn't go back. No. No, I'd rather go west. Not me. I'd rather be any place, I think, than dead. There's some places. Yeah, you haven't been. No, no. Ray? Ray? You really asleep, Ray? Or playing possum? Seeing if I'll take a chance. Risk my life on a long shot. Sorry, ma'am. We're, uh... We're stopping all traffic here. Why? What's the problem? Well, I'm going to have to uh, have a look at your driver's license, ma'am. If you were Liza, would you consider this moment a chance to save your life or lose it? It would seem to be a most dangerous gamble either way. Liza certainly seems to have a cool head in any case which only goes to prove that win, lose, or draw, the prime requisite for any cutthroat game is cool courage. We shall try to find out what sort of a game this is in Act 3. I told the garage man all I need is a simple lube and oil change. He says, nothing simple, lady. Then he talks to me about tune-ups, wheel alignments. I asked if they're guaranteed. He says, it ain't that simple. So I took my car to Goodyear. At Goodyear, all work done on your car is guaranteed in writing. And our limited warranty is good at over 1,300 Goodyear service stores nationwide. Get a lube and oil change now for $8, slightly higher in California. For guaranteed auto service, come up to Goodyear. Do you smoke? I smoke close to two packs a day. Mr. John Gatto, Bethpage, New York. It changes the color of the teeth. He used Topo Smoker's Tooth Polish. I saw a really big difference. Topo Tooth Polish with three ingredients to clean and polish helps remove ugly tobacco stains. It's very pleasant tasting and gentle. I've noticed a remarkable change in the color of my teeth. Topo Smoker's Tooth Polish with three ingredients to clean and polish helps remove ugly tobacco stains. Topo is gentle enough so you can use it every day. This is Roy Scheider. I was struck by the fact that almost two million living Americans have been saved from cancer. I have to admit I've always thought of cancer as a pretty hopeless disease. But the fact that nearly two million people have been saved made me realize that if the disease should hit me, I have a fighting chance. The important thing is to catch it early, before it begins to spread. That's when it's most curable. And the way to catch it early, as the American Cancer Society points out, is with regular health checkups and by knowing the warning signals. Consider that a reminder, okay? And those two million people saved from cancer are a reminder of something else, too. They're living proof that our contributions count. Help save more. Please give generously when your American Cancer Society volunteer calls. Remember... Cancer can be beat. Once upon a time, when murder occurred, a popular cry was cherchez la femme. 
find the woman. In our story, the woman has found the murderer, and she has vowed repeatedly to go to any lengths to avoid being the murderer's next victim. But the murderer seems dubious. So am I. I can only quote from the writings of that seer of human motivation, Dr. Sigmund Freud, Despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, wrote the good doctor, I have not been able to answer the great question that has never been answered. What does a woman want? I'll trouble you for your auto registration, ma'am. It's right there, folded up in the back of my license. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Real nasty night, ain't it? We got ourselves a mess of accidents. Yes, I saw all these lights. Three police cars. I thought there'd been an accident here. Oh, no, ma'am. Just uh, checking on every vehicle headed north. Had a bad bust out over to Brownsdale. Got some real mean ones run loose. Got a mean one right here beside me, officer. But he's sleeping it off. Okay. He's sleeping like it was about to go out of style. That's the way he was, drinking over at Al's watering hole. Yeah. <laughs> We're grateful he's got a good woman to drive him home. Well, uh, here's your ID, Mrs. Lindsay. Uh, much obliged to you for your patience and trouble. Happy to help you, officer. Oh, uh, I mean, we, we also got to warn everybody. The canal bridge two miles ahead is washed out. Uh, you'll have to take a kind of lengthy and rough detour around 19A. Through the Cypress jungle? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, unless you want to head back south to a motel and lay over till morning. Can't do that. Hope you got yourself a fat tank of gas. About three quarters full. Yeah, that ought to do it. Reckon you know that's a mighty wild country through there. Now, don't stop for anything and don't pick up nobody. Not even a little child crying in the rain. Might be a decoy. <laughs> Some folks living in the swamps there are meaner than anything ever broke out of Brownsdale. <laughs> we'll be careful, officer. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, storm's running off into the Gulf. You'll have a nice, sunny day tomorrow. We could sure use some sun. Thanks again. Bye. Ah, those lights back there. That really happened, didn't it? I thought I was having a, another bad dream. Cops all around the car, cops looking in, grinning on me, like I was a rat in a cage. We're all right, Ray. Yeah. We're clear. I told them you were sleeping off an overdose of stump water. You know, you're crazy. You could have done it then, you had me. No, too risky. How'd I know you were really sleeping, or dreaming? And what if you were asleep? You'd wake up all of a sudden and start blasting away. Me first, you said. Remember? Yeah. Just wanting to live. Is that all of it? You're getting high on this trip like a freak show or something, getting your kicks? A little, maybe. Mostly I'm scared. You could fool me. How'd you get started in your profession? I mean, you weren't always killing people. I never considered it. Till the war. And then they paid me to kill people and gave me a medal for being good at it. When I was mustered out and went back to my dad's farm to work, I got restless, and the pay was poor. And then I found out there was... there was a lot of killing jobs around paying top money. A hit man? Yeah, that, and professional soldiering and other things. You like to kill? No, not anymore. I got used to it when it was legal. That made it easier. Good money made it easier. Maybe too easy. After a while, killing a man is as easy as stepping on a cockroach. Hey, hey, where are you going? Canal Bridge washed out up ahead on Route 90. Have to take a detour through the Cypress Woods. But the storm's going over tonight. We'll have warm sun, Ray, and blue skies. Uh, I don't trust the weather either. a double of a place for a flat tire. If there's a nice day for a flat, though, this is it. Get out and help, but I don't want to be spotted. You're in no condition to help. And anyway, I can handle it just fine. 
I'll have the spare on in the jiffy. If I can just get across the state line into the oil patch without being recognized, I'm home free. What's the oil patch? Oil fields stretching from Lafayette to the Gulf of Mexico. They take on anybody there to work as a roustabout, no questions asked. They'll never dig me out of there. We'll make it, Ray. Ought to be there by morning. Then you won't have to kill me. Will you? Listen. Somebody's over there. Over there in that stand of pine. Something moved. Stay on, Ray. Keep quiet. Here, yeah, boy. Look at what we got here. Pretty little visitor. Yeah. Morning, miss. Good, good morning. Uh, I'm Chad. This here's my brother, Hap. He younger than me, but you can see he grows a slight bigger. <laughs> Hello, Hap. Yeah. Hap's real glad to see you, miss. But he uh, can't tell you except with his hands. See, uh, when he was just a little tight, a rattlesnake bit him on the jaw and plumb paralyzed him. Now, 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 get yourself back here, Hap. Uh, excuse him, miss. He can't hardly contain himself. <laughs> I mean, we don't get many visitors, especially pretty ones like you. Uh, uh, ain't you that wheel kind of a heavy problem for a little girl? Now, here, you let me and Hap just come here. No. No, thanks. I can manage. But these little hands of yours shouldn't get all uglied up. Here, let me know. Ow! Hey! Now, there's no call for that, miss. No call to hit a man. Ah, oh, look here. You brought blood on my hand. Now, there's no call for that. Let me alone. Tire tool's dangerous, miss. Why, you might have broke a bone or something. We was only trying to be a Vasius. I don't need your help. Oh, no, let go of me. Don't touch me. That's right. Take that little old tire iron hat now. <laughs> Miss, we got to learn you some proper manners. Hap, <laughs> uh, uh, we, uh, we got trouble here. That's right, sir. Uh, uh, just keep backing uh, off. You better call off your brother or you won't have any. Yep. Uh, hey, you come on back here, Hap. You better listen to your brother, Hap, unless you get a yen to die quick. Now, easy, mister. Hap's brains don't work too good. All right. That's fine. I just keep moving. I don't know what hole you weasels crawled out of, but I'm giving you a short ten count to crawl back. We going, mister. We going, mister. We going already. Got to come on, Hap. Boy, big time. Liza, you heard? No. <laughs> but I might reconsider. Maybe there is a fate worse than death. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh. Oh. Ray. Uh, here. Let me help you. Now, just... Just get that wheel back on. Get it on. Huh? We've got to stop and get that arm treated. Just get the wheel on. The law will have Route 90 roped off in ten minutes if those buzzards recognize me. And if they didn't, they'll be back here with neighbors and shotguns. Ray? You awake? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Hey. hey, it's all dark. Clouds over the moon. Where are we parked? Side of a road. Wow, oh, those... Sleeping pills really knocked me out. I, I don't remember anything. Not even any bad dreams. No, no dreams at all. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I never did like dreams. I did. But not anymore. Well, why aren't we moving? Why, why have you stopped? Waiting for you to wake up. Why? You can't go on, Ray, without some good food in you. Without doing something about that arm. You've got a fever, Ray. It's still a long drive to the oil patch. Even if you made it, you can't check in there half dead. There's some motel cabins just ahead. How about renting one for a while? Cabin? Nice, warm cabins down there along the river. Dream Motel, they call it. I guess because it's a favorite with local honeymooners. Have you ever been married, Ray? Uh, have you? Once. 
Well, how about the cabin? There's a general store down the hill. I'll get groceries and some first aid stuff. I'll sign us in. No one will see you. What about it? Why not? <laughs> How's that feel, Ray? Oh, I haven't been on a real bed for 15 years. Let's get these filthy clothes off. Then you take a good hot shower while I go to the store. Here, raise up a little. I'll take your coat. There. That's better, isn't it? It's late. Late, isn't it? Pretty late. What's the time? Almost three o'clock in the morning. Three, three o'clock. Can I tell you a little about myself, Ray? Yeah, sure. You're a... You're a hard one to figure. I was married at 16. It was a bad deal. Very bad. I didn't get over the hurt for a long time. Then I met Fred. It was beautiful with Freddy. A real beautiful thing. We were so happy. Maybe you wouldn't know about that. Maybe you never knew what it was. I'll never know it again either. Two wins like that never happen. Ray, it's time. Three o'clock. Time to go west. Yeah. Hey. Hey, that looks like my gun. Yes. And I lied about that, Ray. (laughs) I do know how to use it. I figured you did. Why didn't you... Use it before you had chances. Not any I wanted to take. You always had it in that inside coat pocket. Too risky slipping it out. Oh, why now? Why do it at all? The boy you killed so easily back at the station. Like a bug. That was my Freddy. Ah. Yeah, I should have figured that. That was dumb. The jeep was dead. Somebody. You. You had to come and take him home. But you had chances, a lot of chances, to get out of the car, run away, call the cops. Why? You think I wanted them to do it. Inflicting punishment in return for injury. It's an old tradition. It seems so fair and satisfying. When asked for the one word that might serve as a rule of practice for all one's life, Confucius said, Is not the word reciprocity? Do not do to others what you do not want done to you, especially if the deed is an act of murder. I shall return shortly. Vengeance may indeed, as they say, be sweet. However, follow-up studies surely indicate that sweetness, so gained, turns sour. In the case of vengeful murder, we have the ultimate crime. Crime which is done and cannot be reversed and for which restitution cannot be made. When a murderer has killed, regardless of motive, the deed is done. And there is no calling back, this side of the Day of Judgment. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Roberta Maxwell, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.